It was the day the lights went out on Taiwan. An unprecedented power failure that wrought havoc all over the island. Fear spread quickly. For weeks, mainland China had been threatening to retake Taiwan by force if necessary. Many were frightened the attack from the mainland had finally come. Panicked callers flooded the phone lines of Taiwan's National Defence Ministry. The president's office quickly issued a statement to calm the country, putting the blackout down to a power station disabled by a landslide. But even as the lights came back on, these already tense islanders were left rattled by a distinct feeling of vulnerability. ST Day is a Taiwanese success story. So in this situation, the owners of 100 to 100 million dollars of business, they did it all to earn money. So everyone was very determined to fight for their career, for their family. In two decades, he's turned his tiny family business into an international conglomerate, employing 2,000 people. And turning over eighty million dollars a year. You see, Taiwan's people, those landowners, walk their feet are very slow, walk very quickly, and their brains are always thinking about things. So, in the middle of the day, this is Taiwan's unique character. It shows that he is very serious about what he is doing. He is the very model of a Taiwanese businessman who lives in fear of what a communist Chinese government might do to the free enterprise that has allowed Taiwan's economy to thrive. ST Day's little family business just happens to be one of the biggest cap-making companies in the world, with names like Polo, Disney and Nike on his clientele list. Just like hundreds of thousands of other Taiwanese entrepreneurs, he has a big stake in mainland China, with his factories and hundreds of employees there churning out the caps that make his company rich. Taiwan and China depend on each other. And Taiwan is banking on that mutual need to deter China from launching its missiles. It's a gamble Taiwan's President Li Denghui has been prepared to take. In a carefully worded radio interview last month, President Li broke with past policies to describe China-Taiwan relations as a special state-to-state -state relationship. To mainland China, President Li's statement was a dangerous declaration of independence. China demanded Taiwan back down. President Li, it claimed, was a criminal of the nation who'd leave a foul stench behind him for a thousand years. China stepped up its verbal attacks and the effect was immediate. Taiwan's stock market, already experiencing wild fluctuations, now plunged. Still, Taiwanese people backed their president. Given the name Formosa by the Portuguese, many have laid claim to this island. The Chinese, the Dutch, the Spaniards, the Japanese. The Americans, too, have left an indelible mark. Now, with a population of 22 million, its own central government and distinct identity, 
Taiwan wants the world to accept reality. It already considers itself independent and will fight to defend that freedom. Under military escort, we're taken to a base on Kinmen Island, the closest part of Taiwan to mainland China. All of Taiwan's 300,000 strong army, navy and air force troops remain in a state of combat readiness. Only a few parts of the island base could be laid bare to our camera. Taiwanese visitors pass underground to view their neighbours from the safety of this bunker. The view of the mainland is beautifully clear, even to the naked eye. But what the naked eye can see isn't necessarily real. We may see many houses here, but normally pedestrians and vehicles aren't easily to be found. Actually, here's a military restriction area and all of the constructions were built for propagandas only. In these days of medium and long-range missiles, it's unlikely Kinmen would ever need to defend Taiwan from waves of Chinese ground troops. But it still plays a vital role in surveillance and early warning. Here's a hidden machine gun. The black part is a gun hole. The nature environment has been smartly covered in artificial constructions. It won't be found easily without our telescope installations. More importantly, its role as Taiwan's border is deeply entrenched in the minds of those who serve here. These are the forces who train on Kinmen, the amphibious reconnaissance battalion, Taiwan's frogmen. We have to train and train and train, get ready to fire. Once the enemy invades our country, we just do, do our job. Battalion commander Lieutenant Colonel Hung was born and raised on Kinmen Island. He, his family and all the other islanders were subjected to regular bombardment from mainland Chinese troops right up until 1979. When I was a child, and I remember, and uh, I was praying with my friend and at the street, and uh, the mainland China the shooting by the fragment that is partial and the hurt people. One of my friends was getting hurt. Severe. All of these young men are serving compulsory military duty. They have been born and bred to uphold Taiwan's right to freedom, believing that one day they may have to defend it. Beijing has no claim to our sovereignty. Beijing has never ruled Taiwan for a single day. Beijing has never collected a single dollar in taxes. If they want to come here, they need our visa. You know, how can they claim that they, they, are, they own Taiwan? They, they have sovereignty claim to Taiwan. How can they say that we, we are their uh, subjects? And it's, it's simply a distortion of reality. The majority of Taiwanese believe that eventually Taiwan and China should become one China. After all, they're fellow Chinese with a shared culture, ethnicity and language. But until the economies and the politics of the two can coexist peacefully, the Taiwanese say it must remain one China divided. <laughs> We are not ready for unification at this moment. 
as long as Beijing, as long as the mainland continues to be ruled by a communist party and communist system, the whole world is, uh, is uh, abandoning and jettisoning communism. Why should Taiwan people be forced or tricked to embrace communist system? It's 50 years since Chinese leader Chiang Kai-shek brought his ousted government to exile in Taiwan. In the meantime, the world has come to recognize the communist government of the People's Republic of China in Beijing. Since then, Taiwan has desperately fought to stop Beijing's net tightening around it, bringing it back to the fold as it has Hong Kong and soon will have Macau. People fear about the invasion of Taiwan. Taiwanese people are under a situation that we do not have the freedom from fear. And in that case, the financial market will become more fragile and more vulnerable. Professor Po Chi Chen is a special economic advisor to President Li. He forecasts Taiwan's economy will keep being buffeted by China's threats. China is so irrational and the advanced countries does not give us enough moral support because advanced countries are more emphasized on its own interest. It is quite near to the standard. Taiwan has become increasingly isolated in the diplomatic world. These days, just a handful of countries, mostly African and small Pacific nations, dared defy China to officially recognize Taiwan. If we are guaranteed that we will not be sacrificed, then we will be happy to cooperate with the advanced countries to push the peaceful transformation in China. It's highly unlikely the standoff between the two Chinas will ease in the coming months. Taiwan is now in the grip of a hotly contested presidential campaign to determine a successor to President Li Danghui. The front runner is this man. Once a loyal lieutenant to President Li, Former provincial governor James Sung is now a renegade member of the ruling party who struck out on his own. No communism! No communism, democracy, yes. Charismatic, popular. He readily curried favour with the people with extravagant promises during his time as governor. One eye always on the presidential office. His motto, one handshake equals one vote. As bizarre as it sounds, Tense cross-strait relations between Taiwan and China may just serve the interests of the present government of Taiwan. They're more likely to vote conservatively, to stick with the devil they know, not the one they don't. The lead-up to the presidential elections in March, then, is likely to resemble an increasingly dangerous game of cat and mouse. Don't rock the boat. But however, that doesn't mean we can sacrifice the freedom and democracy and especially the security of the people here in Taiwan. But we have every will to 
continue the kind of a strong and a firm position. That is, keep free China free. Keep free Taiwan free. This is uh, what we really want. Living in the shadow of the mainland has simply become a part of life for the Taiwanese. Though raised so close to the mainland, it never occurs to Commander Hung that he might rightfully belong with China. He is Taiwanese through and through. Every part, even a small island, we have to protect. We are not allow the enemy to take away from the earth. Every piece of land you'll keep? Yes. Never surrender. Never give up. Never.